Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. This video is about what tools I take on a trip. So you may not know, Mary and I take a lot of trips each year and we get asked the question quite frequently, what tools do we take on our trips, if any at all? Before we get started, if you could like, comment, and subscribe to our channel, we'd appreciate it a lot. It'd help us out. So what tools do I take? And we, sometimes we go on a one day trip and we've been gone as long as 53 days on a trip. Typically two to three weeks is not unusual for us to be gone. And I would rather work on my bike than call and have my bike towed or, or you know, worked on by someone else. Fortunately, I've not had to use these tools a lot on my own bike. I probably used them just as much on other people's bikes whether they be Harleys or Kawasaki's or Yamaha's. Um, uh, but having the tools with you is a nice thing because you're able to do the little things that might need to get done. An example would be, and Dwayne, you can put a picture up. When we were traveling through Canada up to the Arctic Circle in Alaska, we left a motel one morning and it was snowing and our electric gear was working only intermittently. And I had to, on the side of the road, figure out how to make that electric gear work 100% of the time because it was cold. So I had to pull it apart, find where the broken wire was, repair the broken wire so that we had our electric gear working. So we're just going to go through real quick what I take and why I take it. And back quite a few years ago, Mary got me this uh, toiletry bag. It has two compartments, one on the bottom and one up top and everything you see, most everything you see here fits in this bag. So let's go ahead and fill up the bottom first and I'll show what I put in here. I have posi taps for connecting wires together. I have fuses and fuse pullers. So if we have a fuse go out, I can replace the fuses. These are also some fuses here. I have dielectric grease because anytime you do any work with electrical wires, it's good to use dielectric grease. I have Teflon tape to act as a thread locker on uh, breather systems and other things. I have some double-sided tape that if you know something breaks and we want to just temporarily affix it, we can do that. I have electrical tape and I have silicone tape. Put that in there. I also have an assortment of zip ties. And then I have some extra wires to use and some more posi taps. So in case, like when our electrical gear went out and I had to replace a broken wire, I have some wire here and some more posi taps. And I also have some Velcro ties that you can use, you know, if you want to tie off your handlebars or hold something together with Velcro ties. So all of this stuff goes in the bottom here and zips up. And then I have this for the hard tools. So before we go any further, this is what I take. Obviously put down in the comments anything you think that I should take that I'm not taking. Tell us what you do as far as tools on the road. So let's look at what I don't put in there. I keep the manual, the little manual, you know, just for all those little, there's so much electronics on the bikes, you're not gonna maybe not remember how to enable or disable the EITMS or how to start the bike in case you use your, lose your key fob, you know. So I just keep that with me as reference. I also keep my warranty information in case something catastrophic happens. I've never had to use it on the road, but I keep it with me. I also have a USB um, rechargeable uh, air compressor. So not only can I plug this into the valve stem of the bike to see what the PSI is in the tires, but if it needs to be pumped up, I can turn it on and pump up the tires. And I can also recharge this off the USB power port that I have in the um, trunk. Yeah, this is something you can find on Amazon. They're fairly inexpensive. I'm talking, you know, $19, $20, something like that. So I always keep that with me. I also keep a pen in case I need to make some notes. 
The other thing that doesn't fit in here is my set of Torx, because there's a lot of Torx fasteners on a Harley, so I keep my Torx and I keep uh, a socket set here. Obviously, I can't take every tool that potentially would be needed. I'm trying to take the tools that are most commonly needed, and uh, but you can always, you know, go to a Walmart or an auto parts store and pick up a tool that you don't have. So I have a crescent wrench. I have <clears throat> channel locks. They go in here. I have a pair of scissors for cutting the silicone tape and the electrical tape. This is to cut zip ties and wires, needle nose, always handy. Obviously thread locker, blue thread locker. Anything that you unbolt when you put it back in, you want it to stay in. So you take thread locker. Then I have these uh, ratcheting uh, wrenches and an assortment of open end closed in wrenches. There you go in here. I have an assortment of Allen wrenches that I can use with my snap-on ratchet. I have more Allen wrenches right here. Standard and metric because some of the aftermarket parts on the bike are metric as far as the Allens. I also keep a 10 millimeter socket because the batteries are 10 millimeters so if you need to do any work on your battery you know if a cable breaks or something i have a 10 millimeter socket this is a very powerful tool i have torx allen phillips flathead and i can turn this screwdriver into you know 50 different tools with this i really don't even need these because i have this with everything but I guess <laughs> I just take them just in case. And then a small screwdriver in case I need to pry on something. And obviously an extension. And then this is another very powerful tool. There are places on a Harley that are really tight to get into. That you can't get into, say, with a flathead screwdriver of any type. But you need to get in there and turn something. So you can put take a flathead. Put it in here, and now your screwdriver is only that long. And so this is very powerful, and it has the different heads, screwdriver heads, Torx, flat heads, uh, Phillips heads, and then of course it also has the sockets in both standard and metric. And there have been times where there was no way to get in to tighten or loosen something without using something like this. This tool has probably come in more handy because you don't usually see these in an auto parts store either. This tool has probably come in more handy both on my bike and other people's bikes where they were trying to get to something and they couldn't and this allowed them to do it. So I've had to use these tools on my own bikes here and there throughout the years. I've used them much more on other people's bikes. When you see someone stopped on the side of the road they need help or I remember one time there was a guy in uh, an auto parts store. I stopped at an auto parts store for, oh, I remember. I'd gotten some bad gas in Canada, and I stopped at an auto parts store to pick up some seafoam uh, for the bad gas I'd gotten. And uh, there was a guy on a Yamaha who had his bike all apart, and he was just standing looking at it. And uh, we spent about 45 minutes, and... Uh, helping him out he could not get something undone and we got it undone with this little tool set here and by the time we left he was back up and running so having this whether it's for your own bike or for helping other people out this is what i use if you guys use something different something extra something that i might want to add to my toolkit please put it down in the comments below you all ride safe out there